So it's a great question. It has been a long time in the making. We are 23 years old. Uh, and for many of those years, we actually only had a presence here in the UK and then started to expand about sort of five to, to 10 years ago internationally. Um, the reason that we chose now well, was first, we had so much inbound demand from the Singapore community and our Singapore Bettys, as we call them, our customers, uh, that was really organic. People were coming to our website digitally, looking for the brand. I think a lot of customers had heard about us as we opened stores in Hong Kong nearby. Uh, so that was really number one, listening to the customer and realizing that there was just organic demand for Sweaty Betty in Singapore, which was incredibly exciting. Uh, and then when we think about the timing, you know, I, I think as the pandemic continues to roll on, we realize that there's never going to be a perfect time. And this has been tricky. We haven't been able to go over. I can't believe I have yet to see the store. Um, but we needed to just make it happen because we knew that there was demand and we wanted to make sure that we could, um, we could open up and, and start serving everyone in person. The answer is it depends on the week and it depends on how much time I have. I think as uh, many women can relate and probably a lot of moms can relate, I'm a runner at heart, so I love to run, uh, and I generally that's my default. Uh, most mornings you can find me running in Hyde Park, sometimes at a pretty slow pace uh, if it's been a long night, uh, but always try to get something in. Uh, and I think for me, running is just a way to unwind. I actually never listen to music. I never have anything with me. It is just me and the pavement and uh, and the park. A number of members of our team love to cycle, so they that's definitely rubbed off on me. Uh, and I love yoga. I don't usually have enough time. Uh, but try to fit in yoga as well, either at home or in the studio. So I'm just a firm believer that exercise can come in any shape or form. And I like to remind people, I have a four-year-old, uh, that just looking after her is exercise, for sure. I think body positivity, and, and when I think about self-care, Gosh, that has been a long, a long time coming for me and how to, how to work that in and how to really authentically feel that I could be positive about myself. I think every woman in every stage of her life struggles with this. Um, and that's tough. And I look back on my 20s in particular and go, God, I was hard on myself. And, and um, I try not to beat myself up for that because I think a lot of women in their 20s, you know, you, they look around and you, you look at what's on social media and you look at your friends and, and you always just think it's not good enough. Um, and I think one piece of advice that, that always stuck with me was really trying to focus on the positive. And if there's something you love about yourself, um, trying to remember that every day when there's things that you know you maybe think you could do better. Uh, and then I, I think self-care is, is about being kind to yourself. And that doesn't mean that you have to go to a spa and it doesn't mean that you have to um, you know, spend a whole lot of money on, on whatever you define as self-care. I, I think it genuinely is up here. And, and saying to yourself, you know what? I'm going to be kind to myself today. I'm gonna to let myself off the hook. I think a lot of, of women um, in particular, uh, you know, spend a lot of time beating themselves up in here. Um, and I'm definitely guilty of that. Uh, so I, I honestly do believe that so much of it is, is telling yourself that you're doing, you're doing okay. And, and that's good enough. And if today's a bad day, tomorrow could be a good one.